All right, so what's the deal today? What do we get to do? What are we doing? Flesh, skin tones. Okay, yeah, we get a lot of questions about skin tones. Can I use? Can I use a medium? Can I? Can I? Can I, can I do something cool? I, I can do something cool with the glaze wash medium. I can show them skin with with just washes and glazes. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Woohoo! gang i'm excited for today's we're looking back at this model that we use the glaze wash medium uh for our fur cloak and we're going to be doing a skin um but i'm going to continue on with uh the glaze wash medium being the main component of what we do our painting with i think it's a fantastic way uh to create some really really interesting skin tones uh and some complex skin tones that would normally take you a lot longer to do so again, uh, using the medium and everything that you see that I've pre-mixed here, uh, if you'd like to go back and see how I mix uh, washes and glazes, uh, go back to the previous video uh, that goes over painting the cloak uh, with the glaze and wash medium where I, I actually mix them there and show you. Uh, but I have pre-mixed here. I've got a wash uh, that I have made out of our dark purple. Right, so it is our Procryl dark purple mixed with some of our Procryl black wash. Just the black wash right out of the bottle. Uh, and then some glaze and wash medium to reduce the opacity of the dark purple. The dark purple is just one of our normal opaque colors. Um, so we have a wash that is a dark purple wash. Uh, then we have a thinner glaze of our yellow green. Uh, one of our expansion set four colors, yellow green. Um, that will go over the top of the purple. Trust me. Uh, and then we have a little bit of a thicker glaze. So when I say thinner glaze, this is glaze wash medium plus yellow green, along with enough water to not quite make it into a wash, uh, but to reduce its opacity and have it flow a little bit better. So it's just a, a less opaque color. Then on the dark flesh, right? So again, another one of our expansion set four colors. Uh, dark flesh has a little bit thicker glaze, less thinning with it. Uh, and then finally, a shadow flesh glaze. And the shadow flesh from Expansion Set 1 uh, is done with uh, basically two to one uh, glaze medium to paint. So a lot less glazing medium than we normally use. So it is an even thicker glaze, so it's going to have more opacity. So we basically scale from the least amount of opacity with our wash to the greatest amount of opacity with the final skin highlight that we're going to do today. So we're just going to work in these four colors with what you see here. We're going to apply them in the order from top to bottom that you see. Uh, if you have any questions as we go through this, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I'll probably say that again at the end of the video. Uh, and let's do it. So I'm just going to put my eyes on, grab a number six brush. Again, I'm using our Pro Synthetic number six. This uh, nice uh, matte black handle one is out of the Sam Lens uh, weapon rack set. And we are going to just get it damp. And we're going to go over here into our purple wash. And because it's a wash, we don't care. We want a lot of paint on the brush as we come over here to the model. And, I mean, I say slop it on. You don't want to be completely sloppy, but you want to be pretty sloppy. We want it to get everywhere. First thing we're doing is right over the top of this free highlight we've been using is put this purple wash on all of the skin bits. Skin bits. That sounds horrible when you say it out loud. But it is what it is. If you have watched me paint for long, or 
then uh, you will know that I love dark purple as a shadow color. Uh, purple is not a color that I paint with very often as just a color that you see on the model 100%. It is a color I use on almost every model um, because I love dark purple shadows. Purple works with every color out there. I don't care what color you're painting with. Um, if you want a shadow color, dark purple is never a bad idea. Only color, amazingly enough, that I don't use dark purple to shade is purple. Typically won't use... Uh, Purple as a shadow for purple, I'll go with a dark blue, something like that. Try to keep a little bit of an interesting uh, contrast to my shadows versus whatever color the model wants to be on its own. Okay, so and we're just going in and layering this around on all bits and bobs. I feel like he's got hair over here. I want to try to not get it on my nice fur cloak that we've made. I think he got some skin. We're going to go ahead and pretend like that's skin. Regardless, it looks like he has some sort of gauntlets going on here. Always err on the side of caution. And if you don't know what a thing is, uh, put the paint on it. Always paint over it later. If it wasn't what you thought it was the first time around. Lots of do-overs in our world. Every one of them. Well, again, every chance you get. Okay. Goal here just be cover all of the flesh. Heavy leather bit for his shoulder there. That's fine. Go ahead and drag the purple into his hairline just a bit. The way as we do the hair, we've got that joining of color in his scalp that can make the hair look like it's thinning a little bit if we want it to be or whatever. The skin now having a coverage of that dark purple gives us a really good shadow tone to all the skin we got between the thighs you just want to make sure you get a good coverage everywhere uh it's going to uh, kind of inherit like we've talked about in the past all the darkness and brightness from our pre-highlight layer so it's going to be a lighter desaturated purple in the highlights and a darker purple in the shadows that's going to get taken care of all on its own we don't have to do anything all we have to do is make sure it gets in all the places which it looks like pretty much we did should be good to go we're gonna let that dry we'll be right back so after that dries we've got a really nice coverage of our purple undertone of our highlights good amount of shadow everywhere we need it now on to the next step Again, I'm going to come over here now with our green glaze, and here I'm going to treat it more like our normal glaze, take it off on my thumb palette. I'm going to start painting this across those areas where I'm going to want the most highlight. Create a nice undertone for our skin colors while leaving our purple in the shadows where because it's a nice glaze, it's going to let that purple show through a bit. You don't have to be super exact with where we put it. You want to make sure we get most of the raised air. Not a whole lot of water on the brush, just enough to let the paint flow. See that unlike the wash, glaze here stays where we put it. It acts exactly like you expect the paint to act. Just going to feather itself because of how thin it is into the surrounding colors. As it dries, it watchy, blend in with that purple. It's a good foundation for how we go over it with the skin tones. Step. 
Now, I use purples and greens because they represent all of those colors that are in skin that um, give it life. The green, I, the yellow green like this, I tend to use uh, representing fatty tissue underneath the skin, all those subdermal layers of color. Purple is just a great shadow. Veins, blood, muscle, all that stuff that's underneath the skin. Darker tone to it. Blues, purples work really great for that. Uh, purple's just unbeatable. Works great. Got a nice green filter over that purple, right? head to toe, pretty much. Missed his ears, so I'll come back with a little bit there. So they're fairly well covered by hair and earrings. Want to miss an opportunity to have a little color there. Now we've got the green and the purple. The green is going to dry a lot faster than that wash because it was a very thin glaze over the top. You can see we retain that matte finish. We see the purple showing through it. We get a really nice blend in all of those areas where the green went on. So it's not just a, you know, a big puddled mess. It gives us a nice blending to the bottom layer. And now we can go directly over the top of that with our dark flesh. So again, I want to come over here, I want to remove a lot of the flesh tone off of my brush so that it doesn't pool. I can simply come back, basically hit those exact same spots, although with the dark flesh, I want to make sure I get it into the purple areas in the shadow as well. So we're treating this more like a wash and that we're going to put it everywhere, whereas, you know, the green we kept just in the high spots kind of in our uh, highlights only. This color needs to go into the purple too because this is the top layer or the first layer of skin that we're going to represent on the model. Again, nothing fancy going on here. A little bit of water on the brush, baking most of the paint off. You can see that it's still fairly thick. It doesn't run around like water. It goes exactly where you need it to go. I'm going to pull up. Then we're just painting all of these spots directly with it. Shadows, top of the green, everywhere. 100% of the skin is going to have this first pass of dark flesh, in this case, right over the top. If you wanted a paler skin at the end of the day, you would start maybe with shadow flesh, which will be our next color, and then move into tan flesh. I want this guy to have a little darker skin tone. Directly after it with the dark flesh. Can see that this painting method is a little bit messy. Use a finer brush and get into these details a lot uh, cleaner than what I'm doing here. I like to go a little bit quicker as I'm painting this way. And so I need to make sure that I'm doing uh, the skin tones first before I do all the armor and leather bits. Again, every time I get more paint, I'm wiping a lot of it off on my thumb before I come over here so that I don't get any big blobs of paint or puddles that I have to move around, big droplets that are hard to deal with. Not very water-like because we've used just the medium here, no water in this. Uh, but I still want to avoid any issues. This is really simple. Nothing you can't do or feel confident about. I'm just covering all of the areas that I previously did with the green and the purple. Putting the paint itself, reduced opacity, do all the heavy lifting. It's the wash medium that's doing all the work for us right now. It's 
letting us create a color out of this dark flesh. Let's train purples go through perfect. Happen is that that purple will obviously be in the shadow, green in the midtone. Flesh color brings it all together, and our final color, which will be the shadow flesh, will exist as the highlight for the skin. This can still be a very quick way to paint your models, not quite as fast as just doing a layer of skin and then putting a flesh wash over it, but it gives a lot more color depth to your model. And I think that's got it. Up in some of these areas. Again, we're going to come back over this with the shadow flesh. Doesn't have to be perfect, but we do want to make sure that we don't have any areas of just raw uh, green or purple. I want to make sure we get the flesh tone all of the nooks and crannies we can before doing our highlight. This will set up our shadow color and really the base tone of the skin for the entire model. Let's do a quick zoom. See what I'm talking about. You've still got that nice purple shadow. You've got really nice bursts of the yellow green and the midtones coming through. It gives us that depth to our skin that makes it feel like we have, you know, fatty tissue, muscle, things like that underneath it, as opposed to just doing a skin tone workup where you use a dark flesh, mid flesh, light flesh. The glaze wash medium allows you to kind of take away the fear of using all of these other colors. So you don't have to worry about how your glazing goes. This is very, very simple. You could stop here and have a very nice, deep, uh, almost red uh, skin tone going. I think these are actually gloves. I may not be painting his hands for nothing. Whatever. All right. So next, we go over this with our final glaze, which is the least thin so it has the most opacity and that's our shadow flesh a little bit of water on our brush same brush still using the number six again come over here and take most of it off of the brush you can see how you get that darker skin tone showing through it we're just going to start working it into the highlight spots Here I'll start picking up wrinkles in the skin, crease at a bridge of his nose there. I'm being more specific, guided with how I'm applying the paint right now, if you will. Tell so if that's supposed to be a mustache or not. Paint his nose is always paint there if you have no idea what's going on with the model. Again, the glaze wash medium keeps the opacity of this controllable. It will blend in nicely with all of the sub layers that we've done already. But I'm not having to be very careful here. Just put the color over the top of the high spots. Let the... Uh, Please wash medium do its work. And it'll blend in with everything as well. It really is magical in terms of how it bleeds out and uh, shows the blend without showing all of your brush strokes. Use it a couple of times. The fact that it makes every time you touch the model that much better. You don't have to be afraid of your capabilities of blending anymore. Lases go on like you're seeing in just one 
pass. Not going to speed up this section. You'll have to bear with me yapping. I want you to be able to see how easy it is to get this very quick skin tone worked up. The highlight here is the one that really makes it flush. And this is shadow flush. Colors from expansions one. And all of this with just one layer of each glaze. Normally, when doing this with water, you would spend a lot more time with a lot more layers of color to get the vibrancy. But because we're able to keep the paint thicker, the glaze wash medium, we hold more pigment, more vibrancy, same level of opacity that we would get even when thin water. Again, I'm convinced this is a glove. I'm going to go ahead and paint it with the stones, but I don't think I'm going to. There we have pass one, shadow flesh. Now that we've gotten the full body back to where we started, we can start using the exact same glaze now with a second pass to build up opacity here and create some highlight. I haven't had to switch coloring at all. I'm gonna move my brush right to left, moving the pigment over to our highlight area. Nose there. Up. Still not having to worry too much about precise brush strokes. Want to get paint everywhere. Like I said, because we're doing this, we're doing all the armor, it sure makes being able to uh, be a little sloppier feel better. Make the painting more fun. You can see that with just two quick passes of the glaze medium like this, able to get a good vibrancy, almost get to the perfect spot with the shadow flesh where we would be ready for moving into mixing a little bit of pan flesh into it for a final highlight, or leave it like this if you want. gives us a really interesting skin tone. Zoomed in pretty good here so you can see how everything is affected. We still have those nice purple shadows, but they don't get real blocky. Everything blends in with itself pretty well. Still got good shadow up in here where we didn't we only did one pass with the shadow flesh up in here so you can see the difference between the vibrancy that we get on the outside of the arm versus in here, but the colors match. Blazing gives you all of these opportunities to do some really, really cool stuff. Get a really, really good effect. Very, very smooth. Those blends look like we spent a lot more time doing it than just really quick, sloppy, putting uh, these four colors on the skin. And now we can go in with other colors like tan flesh, uh, other highlight colors that you might want to use, uh, warm flesh if you want to do highlights on the forehead. But now you can take it and turn it into whatever you like. You've got a really, really good foundation for flesh that has life to it as opposed to, like I said, just being that dark flesh, mid flesh, bright flesh, um, with the purples and the greens still being able to show through uh, and giving us that contrast. We get the feel that this guy still has blood pumping through his veins. Got some really nice uh, spots of green as we go into the mid-tones down between uh, sternum there, shadows here at the top of the thigh, and then the purple exit everywhere. Shading. This guy's coming along pretty good. Hopefully that gives you something to chew on for your next model. Uh, the glaze wash medium will do all of the heavy lifting for you. Uh, you wouldn't ever get this kind of uh, outcome with just a single pass of glaze using 
or other medium. Um, well, grab yourself some, uh, start uh, attacking skin with more vigor. Uh, leave any questions you might have down in the comments below. We'll get to those as we can. Join us on our live stream when you get a chance, and we'll see you on the next one. Adios, gang.